There are only three guarantees in life. Death, taxes, and people getting super duper fired up about musky stocking. So there's going to be two clear sides in this debate. The first side is the pro musky side. Now they would argue that musky are really, really fun to catch. It's a growing sport. Young people are getting into it and that muskies don't have any kind of significant impact on the ecosystem of a lake. Uh, the Kerr Report compiles musky data from all across the United States and Canada. It cites 147 different studies and documents by several hundred biologists and its summary states, quote, there's very little evidence to indicate that muskellunge have a significant impact on populations of other popular species, including walleye and bass. Now on the other side over here, you have the anti-musky folks, and they would argue that once you introduce musky into a system, they eat all the walleyes, they eat all the panfish, they'll eat baby loons, they'll bite children. Muskies are voracious eaters with enormous mouths and long razor teeth. Ambush predators, they attack loon chicks, ducklings, fish, and other lake mammals. Long razor teeth. And they would also argue that musky fishing is a small, 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 tiny niche segment of the fishing industry, and that it's not worth the risk of managing muskies in our lakes until we've done more studies on the topic and we know for sure that they won't hurt your walleye populations. Now, the only problem with that argument, I love studies and I would love to see more studies, the only problem with that argument is that there's already a lot of studies. In fact, there, there's been dozens of studies. There's way more than what I have in my hands. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through some of these studies and I wanted to break down the numbers and I wanted to report back to you what the science actually says is happening, not just anecdotal evidence. All right, and one quick note before I jump into these studies, I wanna say all of these studies I will link below in the description. If you wanna dig deeper, that's where you can find them. So the first study that we're gonna look at is done over in Wisconsin by the DNR, as well as the University of Wisconsin in Stevens Point and Milwaukee. And the goal of this study was to determine if walleye stocking is impacted by the presence of musky lunge, pike, largemouth bass, and smallmouth bass. So after collecting a bunch of data and analyzing it, these guys determined that northern pike and smallmouth bass basically had no impact on walleye populations, and muskies and largemouth bass did. Now I'm, I'm gonna read what they have written down in the study in the results section. They said, musky lunge electrofishing CPE was positively correlated to walleye abundances, and largemouth bass electrofishing CPE was negatively correlated to walleye abundances. Because musky abundances were positively correlated to walleye abundances, direct competition or predation is unlikely to be occurring between these two species. So in other words, muskies are not having a negative impact on walleyes in this study. In fact, in this study, they would argue the opposite is happening. So that is one point for team muskie. Bing. All right, the second study that I wanna talk about right here actually looks at the diet of muskie. And it's a super interesting study. If you have the time, you should definitely go check it out. Click the link and read it. It talked about how they extracted the food from the bellies of muskie. It was super duper interesting and there was a lot of interesting data as well. So after pumping the stomachs of over a thousand muskies, what did they find? Well, first off, they determined that white suckers and yellow perch were far and away the two biggest forage items for muskies. And number two, they determined that muskies don't eat very many walleyes at all. In fact, the stomach content of the muskie showed that only 3.4% of a muskie's diet is made up of walleye. Now I'm gonna to read to you guys a quick passage from the results section of this study. Quote, Despite large walleye populations in several of the study lakes, walleyes did not appear to be an important food for muskie lunge, 
While musky lunge and walleyes can be spatially segregated at times, we frequently found walleyes and musky lunge in close proximity at night. Yet when fresh prey in musky lunge stomachs was examined in these cases, walleyes were rare. It appears that walleyes are either not preferred by musky lunge or are capable of avoiding musky lunge. So I would have to say that that is point number two for pro musky team. On that note, I also wanted to bring up an interesting observation from Eric Ingerbretson, who most of you know as a really, really high-end underwater photographer. And this was part of a little article that he put together, and I just wanted to read it for you. Just, just a little observation from him that relates to what I just read. He said, in reviewing my underwater video of musky attempting to prey on walleye, they failed time and time again because of many huge disadvantages they have. Walleye, on the other hand, seem to be unique, uniquely designed for the purpose of evading muskie. It's nearly impossible for a muskie to actually sneak up on a walleye. My video shows that walleyes are speedy and agile, and they escape with little effort at all. Muskies have long bodies that are difficult to turn, and they lack the ability to outmaneuver walleyes. The videos that I've taken underwater show how positively feeble and outmatched muskies are when they, when they attempt to chase down walleyes. Now, there are a lot of really good studies you can check out, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna keep this to three. And the final study that we're gonna look at is the NAP study, the famous NAP study from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. And in this study, essentially what they did is they looked at the before and the after for various species of fish of their populations before and after musky stocking. And when you look at the numbers, when you look at the data, it is overwhelmingly positive for team musky. And so they analyzed 41 lakes and of those lakes, only two saw a notable decrease in walleye population, and eight lakes actually saw a notable increase in walleye populations after muskies were introduced to the system. And so that leaves 31 lakes in between that actually saw no effect. So another interesting point from this data set is that despite an overall decrease in the perch populations in the state of Minnesota over this period of time, lakes that were stocked with muskies actually saw an increase in perch populations. Between the success of the walleyes and the perch, I think that it's probably fair to give point number three to Team Muskie. So if the science overwhelmingly supports muskie stocking, why are some guys having issues catching walleyes? Where did all the walleyes go? Well, to answer that question, we're gonna jump over to somebody who knows a lot more than I do. From what I've experienced uh, with big predators like muskies or pike in a lake, um, say prior to a muskie introduction, if it was the best piece of habitat on the lake, say it's a sunken island or a point that's got a great weed bed and rocks, and that's where you always caught your walleyes, and now muskies have been introduced. One, one thing about muskies is they can be relatively easy to find because they often spend their time on the best habitat. So if there's walleyes using that habitat and muskies have been introduced, a lot of times the fish may still be there, but if there's an active muskie on that spot, the walleyes might not get active because they're gonna get bit. So a lot of times what I've seen is that if there's bigger fish on a spot, you'll see walleyes, it might be obviously smaller than a muskie or big pike, pull off to the edges or they might go up into the cover where their chances of getting eaten or competing with, with those other bigger fish aren't, aren't quite so great. So from what I've seen, if you've got active big predators on a spot, this even happens with smallmouth bass. If there's smallmouth bass that are running a spot and there's walleyes there, a lot of times the walleyes just don't bite when those smallmouth are there because the smallmouth will compete then. But if there's a big muskie on a spot, a lot of times the walleyes aren't active just because they don't want to get cracked by a, a, by a big muskie when the walleye's on the end of your line. And that's when you see walleyes get bit and people say muskies are eating all the walleyes. Of course, any big fish, it happens all the time with pike and muskies, if you've got a fish that's struggling on the end of your line, it's no different than a walleye biting a red-tailed chub that's got a hook in it. That 
just elicits that that natural response from a big predator to come take advantage of a of a vulnerable fish and in a great opportunity to eat. So, I don't know. That's kind of my two cents on it. It's pretty general, but I think that's the that's the case. So there you have it. You need to make adjustments out on the water if you want to catch fish, and that it doesn't matter if you fish for walleyes, bass, muskies, panfish catfish, you name it. If you are not changing and adjusting as the conditions change, you're not gonna catch fish. All right, now for all you guys who made it to the end of this video, I wanna thank you guys for watching. And if you enjoyed this, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. That helps me get the word out to more people. And also, leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. And until next time, I wanna thank you guys for watching.